can we talk about how it's uh, already middle of March? Like, what have I been doing this year? Like, what is going on? How is it going by so quickly? Do you guys ever just like have so much to do and then you just are overwhelmed and so you just sit on the couch and eat pizza? No, I need to hire like you know, someone to like follow me around and like make me do things. Yo, New Year's was like yesterday. So what I'm about to talk about may make a lot of people uncomfortable, but this is why I really want to make this video. So especially to the men, I hope that you can watch as well. Yes, things like periods and blood and uteruses will be brought up, but this is something that half of the adult population deals with. So today's video is going to be a bit longer and a bit more like serious, but I think really important. People keep asking me, you know, what I'm most scared about for my upcoming through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail, and I haven't really been, I guess, fully honest because I feel like this topic is taboo, but what I am about to talk about is actually what I'm most worried about, and I just really want to like open a dialogue between other women especially who are dealing with the same things I am. I do really encourage men to even listen along because it's shocking to me actually how many of like my male friends and just other men that don't even understand or what these conditions are or even know that they exist and I promise you that you know a woman who is dealing with something like that I'm dealing with or something different in her own way and just you know trying to like understand a bit more of like what all of these conditions are will mean the world to that woman. I am to be honest really nervous to put this video out there because I've kept a lot of this very private for the past you know 12 years of my life and I just really am so sick and tired of you know putting on a front about it and I just want other women to know like I need your support um, I want to give you my support uh, finding women who understand what I'm going through would mean the world to me I actually live with several we'll call them conditions um, I have endometriosis I have dermoids that grow inside of my ovary I have ovarian cysts that are normal and common, but I have them rupture frequently. And I also have uterine fibroids. So real quick, endometriosis basically is a condition where the lining from the uterus, which grows on the inside, starts to grow on the outside, which it's not supposed to. And this uh, tissue basically can attach to various organs and it's extremely painful. There are a lot of different symptoms and women across the board are gonna experience endometriosis differently, but basically for me, it causes me stabbing pain every single time I have a period, extreme pelvic pain. Um, there's inflammation on this, with this tissue during women's periods, so even putting in a tampon is extremely, extremely painful. I am exhausted from head to toe, extremely nauseous. I sometimes vomit because of the pain. And I spend the first couple days of a period in a fetal position because I cannot move. It is that debilitating. One in 10 women have endometriosis. Um, the only way to find out if you have it, like for sure, is through surgery. But nowadays, a lot of times, if you have a lot of these symptoms, it's most likely that you possibly do have endometriosis. There is no cure. So then you know that gets frustrating, but you can get surgery to help remove some of the tissue. The tissue will probably grow back, but it's one of those very short-term solutions. Um, yeah, it can cause infertility, so that is scary. Dermoids are pretty rare, actually, and I've had three different surgeries to remove three different dermoids in each one of my ovaries. They are pretty gnarly little guys. So usually if someone has a dermoid, they don't even know it. It doesn't really cause a problem. But mine were growing at such a rapid rate, and they weren't going to stop growing. And they start to rupture, and they're extremely painful. They're like developmentally mature 
tissue cysts, which means that they actually grow things like hair, teeth, bones, cartilage, sweat glands, like a whole bunch of weird, freaky, gross stuff inside of these cysts. And I have videos of all my surgeries, and if you're really into it, I will send you clips from it. But they were literally pulling out like hair and weird stuff from my cysts, uh, from these dermoids. But those grow inside of my ovaries, so I have to be cut open in my abdomen, and then they slice open my whole entire ovary, and they just remove the dermoid, and they just somehow, they just try to sew up my ovary, and yeah. I actually have a, a dermoid in one of my ovaries right now, but it is, I've had it for years, but it's not growing for some reason, which is good, but that's something I'm currently dealing with. Ovarian cysts are common and normal, like I said earlier. A lot of women have them, I think, like most women. I mean, it's just a, something natural that happens. A lot of women won't even feel, won't even feel any or have any repercussions from it. But I know women who have had ovarian cyst rupture, like me, and it is scary when you don't know what it is, and it is extremely painful. And they can, the ruptures can become dangerous. Um, so for me, sometimes I have these ruptures, and it is so painful but I'm okay other times the pain will last much longer than it's supposed to and I won't stop bleeding and then that's when I need to seek medical help and uh, uterine fibroids are just like these little masses that grow in my uterus um, yeah I don't know why I have all of those little issues but I do and instead of sitting here thinking like why me or complaining about it I want to just kind of talk about my experiences and how I came to find out that I had all of these um, things. Endometriosis can be or is hereditary. My mom has endometriosis and I first found out that I had it or thought I had it because I didn't have a surgery at that time for sure to see if I had it. Was uh, I cheered in high school and at one basketball game I could not stand. Even standing was like the hardest thing I've ever done so I had to sit out to my mom about it. She was like, okay. Um, she later found me one time in my bedroom on the floor in a fetal position, not even able to walk to the bathroom because I was in so much pain. And my mom explained to me that she's had endometriosis and it sounds like the same symptoms, just stabbing pain, completely debilitating. I've had to crawl to the bathroom on my hands and knees before. And I know that's like an embarrassing image, but I can't even go use the restroom sometimes because I'm in so much pain. So I immediately got put on a birth control pill with high estrogen and I've taken this for 12 years of my life because there's something about the hormones in the birth control pill um, and other birth control methods that help with symptoms like endometriosis. Now I understand that a lot of women don't like to take the pill for various reasons. Uh, you do have to t obviously take a pill every day and it is annoying but for me it's saved my life. I feel like my quality of life has increased so much because of the pill. Because I have known what it's like to not be on the pill during a period with my endometriosis and I it's awful. I have taken maybe a year off here, some a few months off here from taking the pill just because I get lazy and I don't go back to the doctor to get another prescription. I'm just so sick of taking a pill every day because the pill does make me nauseous like and I do have side effects with it. Um, but the pain of being on a period with no birth control, with endometriosis, is sometimes, I don't like to use the word unbearable, but sometimes I feel like it is. But I have just recently got off the pill, like two months ago, because I do not want to take the pill when I'm hiking on the Pacific Crest Trail for various reasons. Like, it does make me nauseous every day, and there are various symptoms with it, and I don't want to take a pill every single day, and how am I supposed to get more because I can they only give me three months at a time and that's another story so fast forward a few years and I was dating a guy at this time and I was 20 years old we took a trip to San Francisco and I was positive that this was gonna be the weekend that he told me that he was in love with me it's kind of silly to talk about but I was super stoked to have this romantic weekend with my boyfriend and he's going to tell me he loves me and it's just going to be like a fairy tale haha -ha. um anyway we're in the hotel room and we're 
ready to go leave and to go do whatever, out to dinner and go sightseeing at night and, you know, do that whole thing. And I start having these, this awful pain in my lower right abdomen, like shooting pain. I'm hunched over. We're both freaking out. We think my appendix is rupturing. We're both Googling things. He wants to take me to the hospital. I'm being stubborn because I'm like, hell no. This is like supposed to be a romantic night. In my mind, I'm like, you're going to tell me you love me. I'm just going to like suck it up. But I'm laying on the bed, like not being able to move. And then I'm running to the bathroom to puke because of the pain. So I run to the bathroom and I lock myself in there. And because I'm like, I'm not going to let this guy see me puke and just like dry heave. And I'm like turning the fans on and the water's running and he's freaking out. He's trying to get into the bathroom and I'm pretending all th all is cool. We both think my appendix is rupturing, but I'm like, I'm not going to ruin this romantic night. Long story short, we never went out. I went up passing out in the bed in the fetal position with my eyes watering from pain. So I didn't know it at the time, but... I actually had my first ovarian cyst rupture. I found out about two months later that that's what it was when I went in for an emergency uh, ER visit because I uh, wasn't going to the bathroom <laughs> and to the point that it was very dangerous and I got rushed to the ER and I had all these scans done and that's where I found out I had a dermoid growing in one of my ovaries. But they also found out that I had this extra fluid from a regular ovarian cyst that ruptured probably two months before, which makes sense. So within those two months, I found out, okay, ovarian cysts are a thing. I had one rupture, and now I also have this dermoid. All right, a lot of fun stuff. I'm zooming through this. But um, I had to get an emergency colonoscopy to make sure that the cyst or the dermoid wasn't attached to the colon, and then I had to get the dermoid removed. By the time I got the dermoid removed, it had already grown so rapidly that it went from the size of an orange to about the size of a grapefruit. So it was about this big, and it was starting to rupture. And they are torsional, or they can be, and which means they it was trying to twist outside of my ovary and rip off of my fallopian tubes. So the if I would have waited, they told me maybe about another week, I probably would have died from bleeding out because it would have ruptured and just everything in me would have been like... Uh, I would need to get into the hospital really quickly. So that was scary. Um, and like I said, I've had three of those surgeries. I have scars all over my abdomen um, from it. I have a lot. I've been cut open a lot. Um, and on my second surgery, this is where they found uh, some uterine fibroids, like those masses that grow on my uterus, and they just removed it. So my uterus has been cut into. Um, both my ovaries have been ripped open. And some of the my ovaries have been cut off, so I don't have both full ovaries on my left or right side um, and then I have my endometriosis uh, along with my mass my big amount of ovarian cysts that rupture about every four to six months so whew, that was a mouthful I know that there are so many women who are dealing with even if it's just bad periods okay even a period in general is just very inconvenient um, and then there's so many other kinds of issues that women have that I don't have that I just really want to talk about this and bring this up and bring light to it to start a dialogue. Basically, I can't find much about these kinds of things happening, especially in like a hiking community. Because let me tell you, hiking during a period, especially I feel like if you have some sort of condition like endometriosis or anything, is hard. And I'm not talking about like oh, this sucks, I don't feel well. No, like, hard. Very hard. Uh, debilitating. If I am at home in my bed and I have to crawl on my hands and knees to just go pee, imagine what it feels like waking up in a tent and trying to, like, process. I have to pack up and put, you know, 30-whatever-pounds or on my back and hike it it is one of those things that has stopped me from doing a lot of things in my life. So when I really first started to think about hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, one of my first thoughts was, there's no way you can, Jen. That's dangerous, number one. You have a dermoid inside of you. If it just happens to start growing rapidly out of nowhere like it has in the past and you have no idea why, and you don't know, 
and maybe from the strain of hiking or who knows, it decides to rupture, there is a chance that you will bleed to death. Because if you're in the middle of nowhere, I mean, how fast can people get to you? Even if I just have a normal ovarian cyst rupture, what if it ruptures part of my ovary or some part of me and I'm bleeding, like to the point that I need to get to the hospital as well? Same, same kind of issue. Or even with my endometriosis, what if I am having one of those days or a day or two where I can't move? Okay, so I stay in my tent and I just relax. That's fine, but what about water? What about food? I'm only carrying as much as I possibly can for those towns, in between towns. I Like, what if, what if I have to turn back? which I might have to do sometimes, and that's okay. Might have to spend a couple extra days in a motel. I've already thought about financial costs of this. What if I have to spend more time staying in motels during my period? Um, I've thought about how am I supposed to deal with my period. Sometimes putting in tampon in isn't so much pain. It's so painful. I'm in so much pain because of the inflammation from my endometriosis. Um, I want to try the Diva Cup. I've heard a lot of great things about it, but still, what is that going to feel like inside of my body? I'm not going to be using a pad, and I know a lot of people will be like, well, if you're complaining about a Diva Cup or a tampon, then you need to use a pad, but I don't know. I just can't. It's just a, something that I do not enjoy, so do I just free bleed or something? And, you know, I'm sorry this is a lot of information. If this is, if you're a guy and you're, you're, watching this, this is probably graphic, but this is something that I really want to share and I, I don't want to feel uncomfortable about sharing. When I was thinking about doing a big through hike, these are things where I'm like, I, that's like a mess. That sounds like so much effort and just pain and discomfort. I'm just going to be absolutely miserable. And then I got frustrated with myself because again, I started having those thought processes of Oh, Jen, because of all these little conditions that you have, you you aren't capable of doing something like a through hike. It's going to be too much. But then I'm like, okay, so many people have so many different kinds of conditions. Men, women, we're all facing something. We're all battling something. And if I decide to stay home and, like, not do a hike because of these kinds of conditions, then, like, what's the point of just doing anything, really. I mean, I'm going to have these things for the rest of my life. And as I get older, more things are going to happen. I mean, I just had hernia surgery a few weeks ago. Like, things are going to keep getting worse just because that's how life is. We we are getting older. Um, we're putting more wear and tear on our bodies. Um, just sometimes things happen, and we don't know why. I am still going to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, even though I have all of these little things going on. And I'm scared. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm worried about being on top of a mountain alone and, and something rupturing, to be honest. Uh, that's my worst fear. And it's not really so much a, oh, if that will happen, it's a probably win. I mean, this is something I just live with even just by like sitting, like watching TV, you know. Hiking with these kinds of things is hard and it's scary. And there's so many times when I have said no to going out with friends because I, I simply can't. I can't do it. Or I feel like I can't do it because... I'm so tired and exhausted and in pain and I mean raise your hand if you've done the whole going to shower and you have to lay down in the shower because you can't even stand there for five minutes to wash your hair. That's me laying in the shower just like letting the water hit me like and even getting in a fetal position. That's a common thing for me and so hiking while experiencing that is very daunting and I'm very nervous I'm gonna be honest I'm nervous you guys um, basically like with this outdoor community I really want us to be more open about the things that we're going on or uh, be more open about the things that are going on with us I mean we talk about so many different kinds of injuries between men and women like it's nothing you know people are healing from knee surgeries or you know foot problems or just anything I mean, because that stuff happens a lot. Well, yeah, this is not necessarily an injury, but this is something that I am dealing with so many days out of a month, out of a year, out of my life. And for, I really don't want to feel uncomfortable about it anymore. 
I really don't. People ask me, Jen, what's your, some of your biggest fears about the PCT? And me saying it's my health, my health with these, these cysts that aggressively attack my body and sometimes rupture or this debilitating pain that I feel that I, there's no cure for. Like, I want to be honest about it. And I want other people to know, like, I want you to be honest about it. I also want people to know, like, I have struggled with my worth as a woman because of all of this. Because I don't know if I can have children. I, I don't know if I cannot, but I also don't know if I can. But I think that's common for a lot of people in general. Like, how do you know that if you can have a baby, if you haven't had a baby, you haven't tried, right? Even without a lot of this stuff. I used to date men, and within the very first bit of us even seeing each other, I would bring this up. I would say, you know what, if you really are dead set on having children, you probably shouldn't date me or even just like me. Like, we should just probably not even try anymore. Because I was so scared of being with someone and then getting to the point where I possibly wouldn't be able to have children and then them resenting me. That's where I was in life. Like, okay, um, I'm not worthy enough as a human being to even be someone's potential wife because I couldn't maybe have children. Instead of like, like thinking of myself as purely a breeding machine and there's a slight chance that I wouldn't be able to have a baby and therefore my worth as a girlfriend and a potential wife and a partner is completely gone. And so I also want to bring that to light of how silly that sounds now for me to think that way. I don't think that way anymore. Nope. I do not bring that up when dating and I've, you know, and if... We, we start talking about surgeries, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've had the surgery, and um, because I, I am trying to be more open about it, or just, you know, talk about it, um, and people are like, oh, well, like, can you have children, and I say, well, can you have children, like, do you know if you can have children, you know, so many men are infertile, and they don't even know, because, like, that, that's just how life works, unfortunately, I can still have all of these issues, and still have beautiful, healthy children, I just don't know, and I'm not going to worry about it anymore because my value doesn't come from if I can have a baby or not. It doesn't. And I just want all of you women to know, like, whether you can't have children or you can or whatever, I want you to know, like, your worth is not diminished by these conditions. I used to hate being a female. I used to hate it. Like, I have to bleed every month and have debilitating pain and have to get cut open. I have scars all over my stomach. I have to take steroids, gain weight. The pressure for women to look a certain way is already super high, and now I'm dealing with all these other things. Now I potentially maybe can't even have children. Who's going to date me? Like, who's going to want to marry me? Like, I mean, I used to hate it. Like, this is stupid. This is stupid. And I used to think that way a lot, and I'm very happy to say that through years of maturing and you know, regaining some common sense in worth, I wouldn't trade being a female for anything. So when I sit back and I think how much I've been through with just these issues, and it has made me such a strong and resilient person. And the fact that I still can be feeling a certain way, but yet go climb those mountains or go be active or go even just be social or even show up to work and try to be like a contributing uh, member in society while these things are going on, I, I am going to ask, it makes me proud of myself. And it makes me proud of all the other people who are doing the same exact thing, whether it's with these kinds of issues or any other kind of like chronic pain or anything. I'm proud of you and I'm proud of myself. And it took me a while to be able to tell myself that I'm proud of me, but I am. Um, and whether I decide to have children or not, whether I can or not, just the fact that I potentially can grow a human being inside of me is the coolest thing in the whole entire world. Women literally populate the earth. Just for that reason alone, just complete badasses. I'm going to continue to do the things I want to do, like through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, and I'm going to figure out how to make through it with these symptoms. I'm going to do it. I know it. And I just really, really want to be more open about the things that I'm going through, even though it's like taboo to talk about periods and cramps or whatever. For whatever reason, I don't get why, but it is, and I'm not going to be afraid to talk about it anymore. I'm here if anybody needs to talk.
And sometimes that's all that we really need because a lot of stuff, there are no cures. So there's not much else we can do except just build a strong community of us helping one another and making sure that we're not limiting ourselves just because of our symptoms and, you know, the things that we're dealing with physically and mentally and emotionally. So anyway, I would love to hear from you guys. Um, if you don't want to post like a public comment on this, on this YouTube video, please, 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 um, email me in, uh, at my email address that that'll be linked in the description or message me on Instagram. If you find me there or Facebook, wh whatever's easiest for you, please reach out to me. And I just want you to know, like, whenever I hear about people's stories, I am proud of you and I admire you and I respect you and you guys are my inspiration. And, um, although I'm just like, I'm not doing anything special. Like I, I can't change, I can't change what's going on with me. Um, I hope that I can like help people as well. Just knowing like it can be done and we can do it together. This is real to me. This is hard for me. There's no shame in it. And I'm proud of myself. And I think that's important is to, to know that it's okay to be proud of yourself for even just getting dressed in the morning and that's and making it to get coffee or something. That, that it's okay. So whenever you guys are watching this video, I hope you just make the most of your day. And um, yeah, don't feel afraid to like reach out to me or somebody else about something that you're dealing with. Um, because it's important for us to like really help each other because I, I need that community. I do. It really makes a difference. So thank you guys. You rock. And yeah, I can't wait to keep you guys posted. We got about, let's see, another month, a little more than a month until I head down to Campo, California. Anyway, bye you guys. Thank you so much for watching again.